Some of you guys may know me as a band hero, the cosplayer, the videographer. First and foremost, I consider myself an entertainer. My goal is to get a reaction, to get you guys to think, and ultimately to make you guys smile. I shoot cosplay convention videos, fan fiction spin-offs, cosplay tutorials, I'm a fitness enthusiast. Previously I shot an interview at Level Up Expo with Christina V and Christine Marie Cabanos. Some of you may know them as voice actors for Hyperdimension Neptunia, Kill la Kill, and Skullgirls, and one of my personal favorites is Madoka Magica. And in this interview, some of the things that we discussed were how they progressed from being a fan and moving into the professional field and eventually becoming the voice actors that they are today. A topic that means a lot to me and one that I want to explore with you is the instance where families do not support the anime, cosplay, and convention culture. When I was speaking with Christina V and Christine Cabanos, one thing held true was the fact that they themselves didn't have the support from their families of going into the field of voice acting and the entertainment field in general. I feel what's missing among family members is the fact that they don't understand why it is that we like this type of entertainment. To shed some light on this, I asked a number of my friends who are at different stages of their lives, still going in school, finding current jobs in college, and eventually getting their careers up and starting. Pokemon was one of the first things that came out, and I was in I was in third grade when that came out. And so around the same time, Dragon Ball came out. But back then, you know, as being a kid and not having real access to the internet because the internet back then was, wasn't anything, I thought it was just another cartoon. My mom was pretty religious when I was little, so I wasn't that exposed besides like Dragon Ball Z, so I was never into Pokemon, I wasn't allowed to be into it. And same with like Yu-Gi-Oh and stuff. So. I didn't have that much of like a childhood, <laughs> I guess of like that normally comes. Um, but the only thing I really knew about was like DBZ, and even then it was just like a cartoon that my brother watched. Back then, luckily we had cable, so I was always on like a, what was a Cartoon Network back then, just watching that. And uh, one day I randomly happened to find Dragon Ball Z. I think it was like the first time I started watching and um, at the time I thought, you know, like watching uh, Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh and stuff like that, you don't know the difference between the two until, you know, you're older. Compared to probably other guys and maybe girls, I watch more of the girly animes with my sister. Around five years old, um, the first thing I was actually exposed to was going to be the Guyver. The Guyver series I rented from like Bus Blockbuster. Multiple times, multiple times. Um, it was probably one of the strangest ones to go to in the beginning. Because, I mean, it's, it's gory, I'm five, and I mean, ever since then I've kind of tended to draw closer to more of the same genres. So, at the same time, you know, before getting ready for school, you know, you watch Sailor Moon, or I'd watch Sailor Moon, and, like, Samurai Pizza Cats or something. I didn't get any family, anything into it. It was, like, just myself got into it. So you explored it and found it on mm -hmm. TV? Mm-hmm. Where it's a tie between Dragon Ball Z, or no, Dragon Ball, um, and also Ronin Warriors. Um, with Dragon Ball, um, I actually didn't catch the anime. I only caught the, uh, I only caught the tail end of it. Um, the only thing I saw was Goku flying on the Nimbus cloud, and for some reason, that idea of having some protagonist, which I think was a protagonist, um, being a little kid, um, of course I identified with him, and I thought his hair was cool, and uh, just like flying on a cloud, you don't get much freer than that. You're in that generation and you don't have that access to information, it, you know, it, you're not exposed to it really anything else because you don't know those other things. I didn't know what Japan was back then. You know, I, I never heard of the word anime at all. You know, I, I was a basic video gamer, you know, my brother had a NES and I, my first video game was Super Mario Brothers. The first anime I remember watching is probably One Piece. And then realizing what anime was is when Naruto came out. Because Naruto was probably one of the first things in America outside of Pokemon. Because Pokemon is still considered a cartoon back then. 
I never really got super into like anime and manga. It really stuck with like just video games and comics. And that's I still am like that now. Uh, Naruto really sold me on what anime and what it was. Uh, from that point on, after I started seeing that, I uh, was I was hooked. It was like a drug. Every day I found myself going to, uh, like later on, I found myself uh, meeting a couple of friends that always went to the library and stuff like that. And every time we go there, we would just rent out books and just read anime like for like hours on end, like almost every single day that we go. As far as other shows that uh, could come for Japan, or that are part of Japan, there's also Power Rangers for me, which until I would have to say middle to high school, I wouldn't have known anything, or I wouldn't have known us from Japan for the most part. Those third hand, you know, mom and pop kind of video game stores would have a lot of, you know, anime and stuff in general, and just figurines and everything. So I would tend to go more to those shops just to get exposed to it, try to get more knowledge. Since internet wasn't a thing, I mean, wasn't even in existence back then. But when I really actually finally understood what anime was, was because of Toonami. <laughs> Toonami was the first thing that gave me like my in-depth knowledge. Hey guys, this is anime, it's in your face. We're gonna show it to you, have at it. As much as I could, I would try to record like all the episodes of Gundam Wing or something, or like Blue Sub number six, and, you know. I would overwrite other videos and stuff like that from people. So I would write videos from Blockbuster. And then um, I would just tape over them and never return them. Um, Tenshi Muyo. Tenshi Muyo? Yeah. yeah. Is yep. Tenshi Muyo? Oh, okay. Tenshi Muyo. Okay. Yeah, the, yeah. This one. When I uh, went and visited and stayed with my dad for like a short like day or two, um, my dad would probably like watch me. And, um, he would see that I'm into Power Rangers and then I eventually used up all the paper that was blank, taped it together and made a suit out of it. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of crayons, so <laughs> I, uh, I, I wanted to be the White Ranger, but he uh, couldn't do much without a white crayon. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, like, that's like, you became the you're black limited, Ranger. so I, I had a blue crayon and I, I was a blue Ranger because that's all I had. But I saw trying to find the mongoose because Sometimes you miss the TV show, and back then the movie wasn't. Lucky people had, you know, recording devices. But if you missed the episode that week, that's it. Right, yeah. You know, those nothing. You couldn't go online like you could now and watch it. You know, stream it. If you missed it, you would have to wait until next week, where it was again, and then the new episode comes out. You know, and that's why I think the. That's why I started doing the mangas. And around my junior year, someone told me about a venture called Amy Vegas. Um, I'm like, this is a convention? I didn't even know what conventions were back then. You know, I'm like, this is an event where people gather to buy this? Hell yeah. Um, and the first time I went, I didn't have enough money to go. So I volunteered. And since then, you know, the first year I made no friends. I, I met no one the first year. I was so shy. You know, I didn't go with anybody. I knew nobody. You know, and I was really shy back then. And all I did was volunteer, I did my stuff, and that was it. I didn't buy anything, I just was exposed. Um, you know, the next year, because it was one year event, I didn't know those anime screenings. I didn't know those gatherings at the local library for stuff. My friend was on a forum, and she found Vocaloid. And she was like, I found these like two characters that we could dress up as because she was like I guess on a cosplay forum and she didn't even know what it was at the time either and so 12 going on to 13 we both got into Vocaloid and into cosplay and she was like I found this convention in like six months if we start getting ready for it now we'll be good and we can go to it it's in LA as long as your mom says it's okay whatever and I didn't know what it was she was like this is what I want you to cosplay and so it was Rin and Len and I was Rin and she was my twin I guess mm -hmm. and so we finished as, as all good cosplayers do even from the very beginning we finished like a couple days before we were supposed to leave and so Anime Expo was my first convention this goes way beyond cosplaying I feel because <clears throat> this is permanent like you can get in the cosplay and get out of it immediately but getting the art on your body a whole different level. Like you're keeping this, you're not 
falling away from it, like there's no going back once you get the art on your body. So, so for a premise on this, I would say you gotta you gotta be dedicated to what you love. You know, it's gotta be everything to you and more. My curse mark is one of them. Um, I got the shining gun on the other arm, but it's hidden. Because most people see certain tattoos, they're like, "Holy, sh are you serious?" And it, like that feeling that they would, they know and they can um, relate, and it's just an amazing feeling to me. Watching Oshiha, so that was my first cosplay that I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty hard for me to even do because I actually had to train my eyes to close and reopen very slowly. I just chose him because he was cool. He was very unique, very dark, very mysterious character. Ronin Warriors, uh, like I realize now when I uh, watched it again that there were a lot of plot holes and a lot of uh, Deus Ex Machina where stuff just happened for the hell of it and uh, there wasn't much of story and character character development other than I'm Ryu of the wildfire and uh, you know I'm Sage and blah 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 and, you know. uh, and so there was just kind of like the wonder of Dang, they just got, they're, they're like kids that just got this armor and they're like, hella cool, we're gonna save the world. And I'm like, I got nothing else better going on in my life, so I guess I'll save the world too. <laughs> so I kind of like followed that character base of like wanting something more out of life than just sitting at home. I guess the first thing where I actually kind of opened up is when my friend gave me their first Pokemon card, which was gonna be a pony type. So it was like in elementary school, he came up to me, he's like, hey man, there's Pokemon, and I don't know what it was, so he's just sitting there, he's like, look, check this out, yada yada yada, I have two of them, keep it. So ever since then, me and him would just consistently trade and stuff like that, we would seek out, we'd play rock, paper, scissors against other kids to steal their cards. Like, I mean, we didn't know how to play the game, it was just, you know, like the HP, and then you just had a yeah, battle for it, and that's how we, we gathered our first first cards and stuff, so my second card ever was a Raichu that I won from some kid, a shiny Raichu. It was, it was the best day, best day ever. <laughs> well, at first, my mom and my, my dad, they both thought it was a little weird, but they were like, okay, whatever, because by the time, I guess by the time I was like a teenager, preteen, they were okay with Pokemon and done with her religious rant. So, um, for the most part, it was all good. After a while, the family would look at me and be like, okay, so you're like kind of that black sheep. So, I mean, I never catered towards my family's needs or anything. And um, it's for my own personal reasons. I'm really, you know, really private and everything. So eventually they would just kind of not shun me, but, you know, steer clear from me in my own kind of sense. So they would just ease into that weird anime, you know, leave him alone. You know, he's, he's not a normal kid. Yeah, which is which is fine with me, you know. But my sister also once told me, "Don't do these things as well. Don't be, don't be, don't be annoying for anyone. Don't just rush up or just for the most part act like a good person." Which wasn't a problem for me at the time, but I would have to say I wish I talked with more people. I looked to that for bonding and. I really didn't have any friends back then, so she was really there for me. And so I watched with Sailor Moon, Card Captors, and then I would say also Pokemon and Digimon with her as well. With my family, they weren't really as close to me uh, in what I was into. Um, I had a single mom um, at the time and uh, just two older sisters, and so I, there wasn't much influence there for what's good and what's bad and it's just so that kind of raised me you know I really wish that people all my friends we did more research on this stuff because I, I couldn't imagine what my life would be like if I knew those the, the community for this back then you know so being so isolated you know because I really didn't get into the community until I was like 23 you know and so you know it's I think it's it's such a life-changing experience for me because I met so many friends and you know a lot of times we don't have anything in common other than like the memories of you know watching the shows as a kid and just talking about it and something so simple and basic you know it's 
I think more people in their life need to have something they can connect to. I, I guess I really didn't get into cosplay like really until actually a couple years ago. I think in like 2012 or 2013 because um, it was all just like a nice hobby and then I realized people were making money off of it and my mom was like, you should make money off of it. And I just like, I started realizing that I could do more cosplays or I could improve my craft more than what I was actually doing. So um, I started doing more extreme cosplays like Margaret Moonlight and um, a few others that I'm doing now. And it was more than just going to Savers or like going to a thrift shop and altering clothes to the cosplay that I wanted. It was more making it from scratch. I found so much inspiration and motivation from Naruto because there's, there's real life elements throughout the entire thing. Friendship, you know, trust, honor, respect, your, uh, finding your own way. And that's probably the hardest thing to do in this life because there's so many things that can take you away from that life. Drugs, politics, people, just corruption. And honestly, anime was my only way away from that corruption. Like, I don't smoke, I don't drink, and that's because of not only anime, but religion, but in a sense, they are the same thing to me. And it's reinforced. Yeah, it, it's heavily reinforced. It was like everyone else's an escape to forget that none of us, to know that you have another road to go to instead of turning something bad. I mean, something I would do back then with the enemies as well. I would imagine myself with those characters. Then knowing that it was also those characters that if it weren't for them, I who knows where I'd be. I mean, there's plenty of bad influence, but for the most part, it has not gone to me. So I can say I'm thankful for that for them. It has been solo. All of the time that I've ever done anything is usually solo. So a lot of the environment that I was exposed to as a young kid wasn't um, too friendly, I guess, or it was just, you know, violent terms. So anime was kind of my escape. It was my my escape from reality at that one point. It would just help me calm, you know, help me find peace. Uh, as eventually, you know, as as that kind of environment tries to draw you back in, I would pull, you know, harder and harder just to go towards anime, or just to go towards anything I can do just to get my, you know, separate myself from that lifestyle. It was comforting actually, because mm -hmm. he was going through this kind of like the problems. It was I. The thing was is with me is like I was a poor kid. Right. I didn't have much, and so. What little I had, I made the best of it. So I wanted to be like the other kids. Um, my dad didn't understand the concept of Halloween. And uh, so I wanted to make the best of what I had, again, um, by making my own costume. And uh, so, I'm like, what I could do uh, is just be a pirate. And um, so I took like this old shirt and uh, I cut it up. And I was really nervous for the fact that um, I could get in trouble for cutting up a shirt and um, perfectly good shirt. But uh, I used that as kind of like a bandana and um, I cut up some shorts uh, and I just brought it to school in a bag because I was afraid that my dad might see it and I might get in trouble. So um, I hit it um, and I, I took it to school and everyone uh, was called in to change their into their costumes. That's what I did. Um, and when I went to go change into my costume, and I came back, all I remember was everyone having like really cool costumes, and uh, there were like there was a skeleton, you know, there was different things there. Um, but I remember one comment that hit me hard was when the uh, this kid, this, I won't say his name, but it hurt when he said, that's not a costume, you're not a pirate, you're just a poor kid. And uh, I just ran and I, I looked at my two of my friends and they were laughing too. And you know, it hurt for the fact that people actually call me out on it. And even the people I thought were cool with me. And so I felt so alone. 
and I ran to the bathroom and I just cried. So it was years until I could get into any type of costume, even if it was like something subtle like a school play. And uh, that's, uh, I gave it another chance when it was uh, a Japanese club. And someone told me that adults do that, you know, and uh, like, or, you know, kids my age, and you know, of course I was already in college, but um, it didn't matter to me. Like, I wanted to give it another try, and uh, I just embraced it. I like seeing it more as like a hobby. I don't really like having to, I don't really like having to look at cosplay as like, I need to get this done for this convention so I can make money. If I make money, then whatever, that's a benefit. But I think it more as like, if I get sponsored to go somewhere, or I get sponsored to cosplay a specific person or say a specific thing, then I just look at it as a better opportunity to update my craft and like reach out to more people and more people reach out to me and stuff. I don't really, I don't really want to look at it as this is what I'm going to do full time. I want to keep it a hobby, I don't want to drain myself from it. My friends invited me over to Fanime, and you know this is probably like the second convention I ever attended to. So I drove out to California and had a blast with them and they were, they were all into cosplay so they were, you know, prepped and everything. They had all the ideas already set what they're going to do. That was actually my first real experience, I think, with a convention. And I've got to know more more people through anime, and more, you know, the same same uh, minded ideas and thoughts. Why do I go to the conventions? Yeah. To meet new friends, talk to them, see if they're into the same things as I am, stuff like that. Making people smile when they see, you know, a character that I cosplay come to life, and uh, you know, I, I I see that as like a green light for me to reach out a hand and shake them uh, and also just kind of fanboy out and just have fun. When you go into this environment, it's a whole new world just for you and everyone else is just like you. And you can be there just for video games, you can be there for just manga, K-pop, J-pop, uh, the anime, you know, you can be there for streamers, you know, you can be there because your brother likes it or your girlfriend likes it, you know. But I think going to these things, I think the best thing about it is you get to meet people who have similar tastes to you. I hope that this video motivates you to chase your dreams and to follow your heart when you find something that you can dedicate yourself to. And I also hope that this video opens up dialogue amongst your family members to help understand why it is that you like the things that you like with anime, cosplay, and conventions, the things that we prepare for so much that only come once a year. So you guys out there have an awesome weekend, July 24th through the 26th at Otakon 2015. And I'll see you at the next event that I'll be at, Dragon Ball Z Resurrection of F, August 4th through the 12th. I'll be there when it hits theaters. Hopefully dressed as Goku. This is a Bane Hero. I'll see you guys next time.